Welcome everyone. In this video, I'll be showing you the package that I made called Confetti. So as you can see, uh, it's exactly that. It's a package that shoots confetti all over the screen. Uh, it's a bit uh, erratic at this stage, uh, a lot of confetti flying around. But yeah, you can optimize this and you can essentially control it in any way that you want. So as you can see, you can set the direction that it should go. You can set the frequency, you can set the amount of particles that should be emitted. Um, there is still some performance work that I need to do. Uh, currently, if um, you shoot too many particles at once, it's just going to be hectic and a lot of frames are going to be dropping. Um, as you can see, the single shooter, what this does, it shoots at a higher frequency and it shoots fewer particles at a time. So it's not a, not a pump like you initially saw. And then this last one is called Goliath. And yeah, this is just to show you, uh, you can wreck your resources and uh, look at all those frames that get are getting dropped so look at all that staggering animation it's beautiful um, but yeah i <laughs> i created this because of a um basically an advertisement to my new patreon page so um there's a fun with flutter patreon page and this was inspired after i created the patreon page i'm not even sure if i'm saying that correct the patreon page patreon page um after i created that um it came up with this cool little animation that uh, said congratulations you created your patreon page and it was this a similar um, confetti um, particle emission that happened and uh, yeah I was like I, I think I'd like to recreate that okay so I won't be taking too much of your time I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of what the patreon page is all about for the fun with flutter channel um, and then after that I'll run you through how you can use the package yourself the package is on the pub store so it's free to use and you can use it in your own apps if you so desire. If you're not scared of the performance issues it might cause. Um, but either way, um, there are a couple of tiers. So if you feel like you just want to support the, the channel, if you enjoy my bad humor, then you can do the poor programmer and um, you can essentially donate a dollar to another fellow poor programmer. This coffee giver, so you're giving me some feel. Um, you can expect, or you're giving me some feel in the form of coffee. Expect some more videos. Um, I'll be putting some exclusive content that's just available for the patrons. And then there are a couple of other ones, uh, other tiers. The other one is recognition. So um, I'll give you a shout out. So essentially you deserve a big warm hearted thank you from me. And uh, you can expect a shout out on the Fun With website and on the uh, Fun With Flutter YouTube channel. So in my videos, you'll see your name fly by at some point in the video. Maybe make a custom app just for the patrons uh, to say um, hello and thank you. And then the last one, this is one that I'm kind of excited about, or not kind of, really excited about. That is the groupie uh, tier. So if you join this one, the main goal or the main idea behind this is that each month, um, whoever is part of the groupie tier, we collaborate and work together on a community project. We work together to get to some end goal to make some application or maybe to master some skill or maybe explore some state management technique or maybe do some cool animation or potentially create an app from start to finish basically anything that is conceivably doable within a month time frame we go at the start of the month create a poll um, we vote and decide which one we're going to do and then as a community we start a good project and we work together and create something and learn from each other. As you can see for this one, I'm saying bring your workers hats because this will be hands-on. And yeah, that's about that. Um, at this stage, there are not a lot of content on the Patreon page yet. It's still very new. Um, at this point, there's literally just a poll and uh, one other post. But um, I would like to be making a bigger commitment to the community and to you, the subscriber or the potential patron. That's enough of that. Let's go and talk about how you can use the confetti package. Okay, I'm quickly gonna run you through how you can use the package yourself. So if you go over to the pub store and you search for confetti, you should be able to find the package. And here's an explanation and a readme to essentially just guide you through how you can use the package. There's also an example that you can just copy paste and it should work. Um, you would also need to actually import the package. So you need to add the confetti package as a dependency. So I've already done this. I've taken this example and I have a running emulator here with that exact example. 
And if we hit pump lift, you can see it's working. Um, so I'm just gonna run you through how I made this example. So as there's four different um, emitters, I have four different um, confetti controllers. So a confetti controller, it sounds funny, but that is um, almost the same as an animation controller. So all I do is you have to init it with a duration attribute. So how long it will last. And then if you want it to play, you just call confetti controller or the controller dot play. So I have four separate ones because there's four separate um, confetti widgets. So this confetti widget is aligned to be sensor right. And then I'm just giving this align a widget a child of confetti widget. And then within this confetti widget, um, the only attribute that is required is the confetti controller. And there we just pass in the controller that we um, instantiated in the init state. Um, so this one has a duration of 10 seconds. So if we click bump left, it should init for 10 seconds. Um, I designed this to be um, essentially still continuing the animation after it emits and will only stop the entire animation flow once all of the particles have left the screen. So 10 seconds has passed, the emission has stopped, and now um, the animation would also have stopped. Uh, it should actually be in the, the no, actually, sorry, I disabled the printing, I forgot. Um, but yeah, the animation starts when the emission starts, but the animation only stops after all of the emitted particles have left the screen. And um, then there are other attributes you can set. So the blast direction is a radial value that says the direction that it should blast in. So if we give it a value of pi, that will be left, not left. So that will be a value of left. So 3.14 pi. If it's zero, it will be right. Um, this uh, goes right. And if it's pi divided by two, it will go down. And if it's minus pi, divided by two, it will go up. So as you can see, I just clicked harden and frequent and it took a while to blast. Like it didn't immediately go. The controller immediately played as soon as I pressed the button. But as you can see, there's an emission frequency attribute. So this essentially says, what are the chances that it will emit on a, a given frame? So this one says there's a 1% chance that it would emit um, on any given frame. Um, that might seem a bit low, but given that uh, ideally there should be 60 frames a second, um, that is a chance of 1% uh, 60 times a second. So each second you should, should see an emission. So the reason that you can set the emission frequency is that you can control something that it kind of looks like it shoots out every once in a while. It's not as stiff. Sometimes it shoots out a lot. Um, as opposed to this single shooter, I'm sending out a single um, particle or a single confetti um, with a higher frequency rate. So if we go to this single shooter one, you can see that the emission frequency is higher, but the number of particles that are emitted um, are, is lower, as opposed to the pump lift um, button that has a low emission frequency, but a higher number of particles. So um, as a dumb example, we can maybe make this one um, go a bit lower, but say it should pump out 30 and hit control S. I think I have to do a restart. Now you can see it's shooting out more confettis, but it's shooting it out at a, um, a, a fewer frequency. It's not as often. So this is just a way you can customize it. So yeah, please note, um, if you shoot out too many at this current point in time, it will probably be a bit laggy. Um, in a future video or in the future, I guess, I would like to optimize this a bit more. Um, there are a couple of things that I've been thinking that we can do video-wise to explore um, performance optimization. And this might be a good starting point, seeing as um, there is a lot to explore and a lot of ways that I can think of that this can be optimized. Um, maybe doing using isolates to run the processing on a separate thread. Um, ideally, maybe there's, uh, maybe we can just look at the inspection tools to see where the actual problem is, where the bottlenecks are occurring, and what methods we can maybe optimize to 
um, to decrease the computation time. Um, okay, but yeah, continuing that, um, actually jumping back, if that's something you want to see, let me know in the comments. I will be, um, I'll be ecstatic for that because that's something I would want to explore. Um, but yeah, uh, the other attributes that we can set are the should loop. So currently it's not looping. So once the 10 seconds is done, it just uh, stops. So we can actually set this to be true. Hit control S and then it should loop after the 10 seconds is done. Okay, and uh, 10 seconds has passed and you, as you can see, it's still shooting out. And you might have noticed that all I did is I changed this value and then hit control S so that I hot reload and then it, um, it, it changed it um, at runtime. So essentially um, you can uh, create a button to say whether it should loop or not or if the looping should continue or not. So for example, we can change this on pressed to say it should play and then should loop equals false to say it should stop, stop playing if it is already true as an example. Yeah, so a lot you can play with. Um, for these radial values that I set for the blast direction, you can obviously set it to be 45 degrees or at any angle that you want. Um, yeah, I, I hope you like this package. As I said, um, there are still some performance tweaks that can be made. So be careful, it might not be as performance as it can be. Um, another thing that I didn't mention is this display target. You can see that I set this to true. As you can see, there's a little target over here just to show where the emitter is. But yeah, that's essentially that. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. And yeah, check out my Patreon page. Catch you guys in the next video. Cheers.